Lamar had no answer for any of the blitzes last night. It's not just really the quarterback. It's the offensive coordinator of the Ravens. They, they just were totally out of it. Now, 77 degrees and 86% humidity can do that to anybody. Sure. And it looked like they, you know, they had like a really, really bad off night. Like just nothing was right. Lamar was short. He was throwing balls over people's heads. You know, they're really like guys had a stretch for them. A couple of times I thought Marquise Brown was going to go off. Um, you know, he had a bend down for one that was around his ankles late in the game. I mean, it was just, it was. It, Lamar Jackson's like capable of that clunker. I know everybody is, but like. Yeah, we all, I mean, we all have those bad games. But uh, he didn't expect it here. You Would you expect it against a, a great defense or a really good team in the playoffs? He's had some of those games. But I didn't expect, I don't know, who, who the hell expected this Well, I mean, like, I, again, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to make excuses. It just happens. You go down there at 70 degrees, uh, 70, almost 80 degrees. And like I told you, it's, it's just miserable to play in that kind of weather. Fields all chopped up and everything, so it really plays against what his game is. You know, he's fast. He's he darts all over the place, and that Miami defense was all over him last night. I mean, they had they they were on them, and then once you show in a game that you can't handle a blitz, then guess what? They're going to keep coming until you handle the blitz. And and Troy kept pointing out last night. I mean, how many times are they going to play this defense with four cross and everybody at the line of scrimmage? I mean, how long, you know, sooner or later, you got to hit a shot. You got to take a shot. But the problem is, is that there was no blocking scheme that was able to stop the guy coming off either side of the end of the the line of scrimmage. Uh, All right. So Lamar Jackson doesn't have a long-term contract extension right now. No, he doesn't. Now he is got the fifth year would be next year for him. Mm -hmm. He's he's the same year as uh, obviously Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. So uh, uh, Josh, Josh Allen Rosen. got paid two hundred fifty-eight million. Yep, he got an Baker extension. Baker Mayfield has not gotten paid yet. Not yet. Sam Darnold will not get paid. Well, he, they guaranteed his eighteen point five million next year. But he's not going to get like a Josh Allen no, contract. No, he's, obviously he's, they're going to have to swallow hard next year and figure out whether or not he's their guy. As now, they signed Cam Newton, by the way. Yeah, I know. Oof. I know. I, listen, I'm not on him anymore. <laughs> right? okay. I'm not, I'm not right. anymore. Okay. Uh, I was last year, not this year. There's no way that the Ravens don't sign Lamar Jackson to a long-term contract, is there? Well, you know, I would say that he's in the MVP race. There's no question yeah. about it. And last night he had a clunker. There's no question about that as well. But if he has another well, one of these early playoff exits where he doesn't, he plays like that. Well, I, as I understand it, you know, Jason Lockenford has been telling us. Now, he has – Jason lives in Baltimore and has a radio station down in Baltimore. And he says they've been negotiating and that Lamar's mom is very heavily involved in it. Yeah. Now – what they're negotiating, how much, how long, guaranteed money. I mean, he really is the face of the Baltimore Ravens. But, you know, your your guess is as good as mine as, as to how much they're going to pay him. I He is not <laughs> – it's, it's a weird it's, – let's put it, it's just a weird one. I mean, he's a great player, but when you see him on that field last night, and I think the field conditions had a lot to do – was slowing him down last night. I mean, yeah. it legitimately slowed him down. And there were, you know, there's guys in the history of the NFL when we used to all play on grass before the AstroTurf, the advent of the AstroTurf. Teams used to let the grass grow if they felt like they were playing a faster team than that. Yeah, I remember an old one back where Notre Dame grew the grass high for Tony Dorsett when, when Pitt Just went let in the there. the grass grow and get real thick. And he ran for over 300 yards anyway. Well, I, Sal Champy yeah. did that at East Iceland. Oh, really? Yeah, we had a bunch of guys like you, you know, short Italian guys with bad haircuts. <laughs> That's right. Slower than crap. Hell yeah, and man. And, you know, we were playing all these other teams that came in that were faster than us. Sure. Let's slow them down. Yep. So, but I, I you know. No excuses. Yes, you're right, Al. And I, I appreciate your honesty and I appreciate your toughness <laughs> seeing that there are no excuses. But last night he was slowed down. But I don't no know excuses. how much. I have no idea how much to pay him. I really don't. I'm going to give you the top average annual value quarterbacks in football, and you tell me whether or not Lamar Jackson has earned it more than they have. Patrick Mahomes. No. Josh Allen. I I would say yes because he has an MVP, and Josh does not have an MVP. All right, well, Josh Allen's number two on that list, so, I mean, right there, I I know. $43 million. When you do comparables, there's no question about it. There's no question about it. Number three is Dak Prescott. Um yeah, because you know Dak's always hurt. He, yeah. you know, he's missed a ton of games. But then again, you got to remember Dak Prescott was like a fourth round draft pick. He wasn't a bonus baby coming. You know Lamar, they traded up to get him at, at number thirty two, but it's still a first round 
number for him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Lamar has earned it more than Dak for yeah, sure. To this point, I would say yes, but you, you made a very good point. What what happens if they make it to the playoffs again? And he and again, they don't win. Well, you know, it didn't it hasn't held back Josh Allen or Dak Prescott. I mean, there's playoff losses all over there for them and not making the playoffs too. What about Deshaun Watson, thirty nine million, number four on the list? Now forget him. I mean, forget about the forget him off when he got the deal. Had Lamar earned it more than him at that point? Again, yes. Yeah. So that's I mean, and here's the other thing too. There's the one thing I will say about Lamar Jackson that I know I don't. I don't have to worry about him. He cares. He wants. Yeah. He wants to be the guy. Wants he to wants win. to play. You can see he got frustrated on the sideline last night. And I've been. Fr we've all been frustrated on the sideline. I mean, you know, it's just that they have been so like, like woefully inconsistent. And, you know, there was this thought that Odell Beckham Jr. was going to go there. Like, Odell Beckham Jr. is not going to that passing field, that passing game. No way. And now we have to hate the Rams, don't we? Isn't that the thing that we all have to do as football fans is hate the Los Angeles Rams? You guys scoffed at me when I told you the Rams would be in this. No, we did not. Like, oh, no, no, not the Rams. They got the wide receivers. I did not. Wait a second. But the That's only reason not I said, said. All right. The only reason I said the Rams initially yeah. was because, you know, he's from L.A., and LeBron's tweeting at him, you know, free Odell, free Odell. So it's nonsense. And then, you know, of course, they paid him pretty good money. And somehow, Les Snead, their GM, just keeps, you know, I don't know. This doesn't really push the ball down the road because it's only, you know, now until the end of the playoffs, how, depending on how deep they go. And it just felt like he is going to want to go home. He's, you know, he doesn't want to go to Green Bay where, you know, you're going to an axe throwing, you know, bar <laughs> as your, your night out. Yeah, sure, I understand. You know, so. Well, but that's what Odell's all about, man. He's all about the glitz and the glamour and the that's big right. city and everything else. And, and plus, you know, I, I, well, I would have thought either LA team, but uh, the Chargers aren't usually. They usually don't go down that kind of road. And plus, they have pretty good wide receivers themselves. You know, it, now it's Matthew Stafford's issue. You know, Matthew Stafford and Sean McMay, it, it, you know, how does he impact them moving forward? Now, how to, you know, when you go into a game, you know, you'd like to have a free mind and you'd like to just get the ball wherever the defense tells you to throw the ball and you don't want guys coming back. He's going to be on his best behavior. He's going to try to have a, a really impactful final part of the season and be impactful in the playoffs. But, you know, it's still, it's a presence. Now, you have told me before that the knock on Odell Beckham Jr. is that he doesn't really listen to the offense. He runs some of, some of his own routes and doesn't pay attention and says, hey, I'm open over here. Why don't you throw right. me the ball? But the quarterback has no idea where he is because he's not where he's supposed to be. Now, the reason why I think that could be a real problem in L.A. is it seems like Sean McVay's offense is so incredibly precise even more so than your average NFL offense. If this guy's freelancing out there, it's really going to be an issue. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, though. Um, somehow, some way, Eli Manning read him. I don't, I don't know how. And I used to say, uh, in Kevin Gilbride's system, there was a couple years there where Eli looked like he was completely bamboozled by what was going on down the field. There was a lot of hesitation. There was a lot of holding on to the ball. There was a lot of, you know, taking sacks because Kevin Gilbride's offense would allow the wide receivers at the top of their routes to make decisions and you got to hope that you and the quarterback were on the same, or the, the quarterback and the wide receiver were on the same page. I remember we tried that when I first got to the Jets. It, it was the run and shoot principles. And Walt Harris was our quarterback coach. And uh, he was kind of like our offensive coordinator along with Bruce Coslett. And I remember we, we put this package of plays in and we would call it, I forget what we called it, but it had those principles. And I was like, forget. After about three days on the field, I was like, get this crap out of here. I can't, I cannot play with the guys that I've never played with before, and we're allowing them to make decisions at the top of the route, and you want me to get rid of the ball. And I, I always hated that kind of offense. And there was some of that that uh, and I know for a fact there was some of that that was going on in Cleveland with Odell. He'd go out there and run his own routes. And I had a guy that I played with here at uh, at the Jets, especially my third year at the Jets, because we didn't have a tight end coach. And his name was Johnny Mitchell, and a, a incredibly, incredibly gifted athlete and just a tremendous receiver. But he would do things on his own, and he'd come back to the huddle and goes, you know, I was open. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know where you're going. So I can't, I can't, you can't appreciate what I'm dealing with. You got to appreciate what I'm dealing with first. 
you know, and we used to call him 7 Eleven. Yeah. Know, he was open 24 7. Right. But if you don't know where he is and you're going through the progressions, it doesn't ma- mean a thing if right. he's open. And offenses have concepts. Yeah. And those concepts, you will run your route. You are, you know, it's almost like it's dictated the way you're going to run your route because there's somebody either behind you or somebody coming on the other side. Like, you can't go, if you're supposed to go seven yards and across the field. And there's a guy on the other side going, uh, you know, 12 yards, and he's cutting in. So it's like, you know, you're they're meeting in the middle, but they got to be like, there's got to be separation there because you're trying to put pressure on the linebacker. I mean, is Odell going to be able to come in and learn all this stuff? I, I don't. Well, it's not. It's not that hard, and they'll probably keep it to a minimum for him, and they'll probably put him like, outside, and they'll say, okay, you're going to run a post, you're going to run a corner, and you're going to run a go route. You'll run a. You'll run an out I route. I feel like McVay's. McVay's offense isn't more complex. I've always felt like he was like a little boy genius, and you know, it seemed no, like it's, more more it's, mid-season it's a, Odell Beckham Jr. is going to come in and just understand all the principles. Well, and just get there's it. a lot. There's a lot of play action passing. There's yeah. a lot of bootlegs. There's a lot of half field stuff. Um, you know, there are, you know, bootleg to the right, throw it back to the left. I mean, that kind of stuff. And is that, I don't think it's terribly difficult. And the other thing that Odell Beckham does do well, and I got to give him credit for it. He, he blocks well down the field. I mean, he'll, he'll get involved down the field. So uh, look, I, uh, I understand where the Rams are coming from. They built this new SoFi stadium. They're going to do everything they possibly can. Uh, to get to the Super Bowl. They want to be a home Super Bowl team like Tampa Bay last year. But this guy is basically has a track record. This is like... Yeah, I think he's going to get cut before the is, end of the year. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I I think think is, he, I'm serious. Nah. I think he's going to get cut before the end. Of, he's not going to understand. He's not going to get it. He's going to go out there. He's not going to be paying attention. It's all about the L.A. stuff. He's not going to buy in, and they're going to cut him by the end of the year. No, they will not Watch. Cut him. Watch what, I, what I, I will say that he will be sitting courtside for Lakers games. There's no question about that. He will either... One of two things will happen. He'll either get benched and you're not going to see him get a lot of reps out there, or he's going to get cut. I got. I was wondering how Matt Stafford must have felt about this yesterday. Because, you know, let's face it, Matt. Matt's a great player. There's even more a great pressure arm. on him now. Well, there's great arm and there's great player and all this other stuff. But, you know, let's face it. He's not the most, you know, outspoken guy. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. always been rel- relatively quiet. It's never sure. late. No controversy around him. Always gave the Lions a chance to win. And he's been kind of like he's had a great season, you know. He's had a, he had a clunker the last game, but for for the most part, Sean McVay has been able to do things with him that he was unable to do with Jared Goff. And I'm just wondering how he must have felt last night. Oh, we're getting Odell, or oh my God, we're getting Odell. You know, which way was it? Yeah, I think he probably is more. We're getting Odell. We got Von Miller. This is it. This is on me. No excuses. That's what I think he was probably thinking to himself. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.